guys, we have a fantastic episode of Carry Trainer today. We brought our friend Dan up from Polymer 80, P80, Poly80, P80. You guys have probably heard of Polymer 80. We've seen tons of people review them. You guys started out doing AR lowers? Correct. The AR 80% polymer receiver was our first product. From there, we advanced into a 308, the first ever 308 polymer 80% receiver. Uh, but we really, really hit gold when we came out with our pistol frame. With these? Yeah. Yeah, you guys did this one a couple years ago for us for an event. It was built for us with, with your parts. It's been a good little gun. So today we're gonna talk to you guys about what makes these unique, what makes them different than other polymer pistols on the market, and then really you guys at one one point were just making the polymer components. Now you make the entire assembly. Yeah, we realized there was a lot of interest for our receivers just because of the attributes that we'll talk about in a little bit. Mm -hmm. But we wanted to become a full spectrum one-stop shop for everybody, so we got into the slide market, we got into the barrel market. We now make a complete frame parts kit. We make slide parts. So soon enough, uh, even though we still support the builder's market, company's slogan is engage your freedom like because that. we want people to engage the freedom they have in building a homemade firearm. But we are transitioning into a new phase of complete pistol builds. We're hoping to launch those later this year. So the idea is you go into a gun store, if an 80 percenter is not your thing, you can go in and there's a Glock, there's a SIG, there's a Smith & Wesson, there's a Polymer 80 completely built pistol. So somebody will be able to walk into Bob's Gun Emporium mm -hmm. and buy pretty much this, yeah. take it home, however their state law allows for the legal transfer of a pistol. Yep. That's pretty cool. You guys do all the internal parts, you guys have, like here's the uh, slide parts kit, and we're gonna get into this. We're gonna show you guys, we're not gonna show you how to do it, we're gonna have another video that you can look at elsewhere, but for this channel, we're gonna go through a little bit of the process, YouTube guidelines, if you don't like it, send them a letter, don't let us show you all the nuts and bolts. But here's the lower parts and the upper parts, right? Correct. What would make these different better than, say, Glock? Um, well, starting with the frame, as we kind of alluded to, when we got into the design of our pistol frame, we really took a hard look at what is it about Glock frames that people don't like. Mm -hmm. And the biggest complaint is the grip angle. Mm -hmm. People, some people it works really natural for, but a lot of people that don't like it, they just they have a really hard time finding the sights when they punch out. So we decided to change the grip angle. We incorporated a 1911 style grip angle into it. To go along with that, we added a double undercut. These are features that generally people who do have a Glock 19 or a Glock 17 will send to a custom shop to have implemented into their frame. So a lot of these features are, like I said, they're already built into the frame. It's got a really nice factory texture. It's not a stipple pattern, it's a factory texture. It's grippy, it's comfortable, but it doesn't abrase. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. I like to carry appendix, and most of the time it's under my shirt, and it doesn't abrase. So it's it's really a nice texture. It is. Uh, it it is depending on i'm sure i've got fairly calloused hands which requires it to be even stickier really sure. than a softer skin and this like you said it's not like that's not cutting me or something like right. some stipple jobs it sticks good to the hand i just pulled this out so you could see the the uh, difference in angles, which maybe we'll get some close-ups of that later once we get this, got them set up. The only parts really that you guys don't supply from you is sights, really, right? Right, we are actually in the process of developing our own sights. Well, of though. course you are, so, of course yeah. you are. Somebody's gonna order this stuff, they go to your website, Yep. and you can pick which color, which size, because you make multiple sizes. We do, we make, uh, this is happens to be our PF940C. PF940C. C, C, which would be your Glock 19 compatible frame. Okay. We have a full size frame, the PF940 V2, so that would be your Glock 17 compatible frame. We have a PF940 SC, which stands for subcompact, so your Glock 26. 26. Okay. We recently came out with a PF940 CL, which is kind of the opposite of what the Glock 19X is. So your Glock 19X runs a 17 length grip with a 19 length slide dust cover setup. The CL is just the opposite, so it's got more of the concealed carry in mind. So it's a short 19 <clears throat> grip with a 17 length slide dust cover. All right. And then brand new for this year, uh, we released it at SHOT Show, is the PF45, which would be your Glock 21 or your Glock 20. 
cool. setup. So if you want to build a 10 mil, that's the frame for you. And you guys make the barrel and all that jazz? Not yet on the uh, 45 and the 10 mil, but those are coming. Uh, okay. We're certainly working on those. Um, all these frames, however, are available in a myriad of colors, as you alluded to. Obviously, we have black, flat dark earth, OD green. Today we're working with cobalt. Cobalt. A lot of people, when you think of cobalt, you think of a blue. This is actually taken from the Cerakote cobalt. Interesting. It's a really nice dark gray metallic color. So here's what I want to do, because we're gonna we're basically guys filming two videos here. It's gonna be one continuous video, but for you YouTube watchers, you're gonna be missing some information, which you'll have to go to the link to watch the whole thing. I get the, the lower, the receiver, and this is what it's gonna look like, right? Mm -hmm. You give us a few parts. We've got drill bit, two more drill bits, which it, this jig tells me where they go. What's that part called? This is the rear rail module. Because it's an 80% frame, it can't accept the slide, okay. nor can it have the rail built into it. So what we did was we designed two proprietary parts. The first part here is what we call the RRM. This is the rear rail module. So this will fit inside where the trigger housing normally sits. Mm -hmm. Only the difference is the trigger housing fits inside of this. Ah. So that's kind of a proprietary and then our, and then our difference. slide is going to ride on Correct. Those. Very cool. Then we have the LBRS, which is the locking block rail system. Mm -hmm. So what we did was we designed the locking block and incorporated the front rails into a single piece. And this sits where the locking block normally would. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Along with the kit, <clears throat> we include two three millimeter pins. One of the pins is obviously for the front legs of the locking block. Uh, we like to call this a Gen 3 compatible four pin design because instead of three pins, we incorporate a fourth pin. To go along with that, we include a replacement pin for the OEM trigger housing pin. The okay. OEM pin is a polymer pin. Okay. A lot of times if people are constantly taking parts in and out, that pin can get mushroomed, it can get bent, ruined. Our pin is a stainless steel black nitrated pin. Oh, so this is stainless steel? Stainless steel. It's a little bit longer, so it grabs more meat in the back strap when you punch Why it. Why do you put nitride it, just so it's not shiny? Just to give a coating to it, so okay. that way it's, you know. All right. So we're going to just, we're, I want to attack this. I want to do a good job, but I want people to see what this process is. Again, for you YouTubers, I'm going to say it a few times. You're going to have to follow the link to watch the whole process. YouTube guidelines, not mine. I'm going to take this out of the jig real quick, just so folks can see. This jig takes away a lot of the ability to screw things up. So you have a completely stripped down frame lower receiver that requires some machining work to make it happen. These are here to prevent you from being able to put parts in it to accept the slide. It was part of the original design we came up with when we submitted for approval with the ATF. So, and it's a simple process. The one thing I wanna express for those of you who are watching is it's not a difficult project. It's just take your time with it. Mm -hmm. We say this all the time, whether we're at trade shows or we're talking to customers, you can take material off, but you can't put it back. So your yeah. best bet is to just simply slow down. Take your if time. you're unsure, you can go to polymer80.com. We've got both video instructions as well as written instructions, downloadable PDFs. Just take your time. And if at the end of the day, you run into a, a spot where you feel like you're just stuck, you don't want to go any further because you're unsure, you can call our customer service department. We have a full customer support department, uh, Monday through Friday, eight to five, they're available. You can shoot them an email if it's on the weekend. They've got about a 24 hour turnaround time to get back to emails. We do everything we can to make sure you guys are successful because at the end of the day, it's your experience. Mm -hmm. And in engaging your freedom is your right to be able to do this. So we wanna make sure you're successful in what you're doing. While I'm doing this, why don't you comment for a minute about how the law works? So technically, I can do this under yeah. the US law. Absolutely. You can't do this for me. Correct, I'm not allowed to do that. This is gonna be your firearm when it's complete, therefore it's up to you to finish it. Uh, to Mickey's point, First and foremost, under federal law, 100% legal. But we advocate for you to be up to date and, and understanding of your state and local laws. We can't keep up with all of them. There's a lot that is consistently changing as you all well, are well aware. As in California, the laws, as everybody, most people are aware, they recently changed. You can still do this in California, but you have to serialize it. You can't leave it as an 80 percenter. So again, that's just one example. Research your state and local laws, know what you're getting into before you get into it, don't get yourself in trouble. And where would somebody go to possibly look at their local laws for this? Depends on the state, uh, state DOJ. Mm -hmm. um, 
things of that nature. There's a lot of... Uh... Alright, so we showed you guys this gun getting built in the gun room yesterday. We got P-Dog here. He likes to be called Poly80 Dan. That's your name on Instagram, right? P80 Dan. So we brought two. We're gonna have a little fun. We got a dueling tree, but the one that we just finished, we wanna test accuracy, reliability, we wanna test all of its functions. We're gonna shoot some groups. We'll draw and shoot. We'll do some mag dumps and see if we can keep the rounds in. Uh, an acceptable group. We'll watch this gun in recoil, see how that texturing feels, maybe do some rapid mag changes. Plug our friends at Neo Mag. I'm gonna bust that one out and we're going to draw from the Neo Mag during those mag changes. You guys ready? Good to go. All right. All right, so let's just, uh, we'll go through our normal loading process, right? Lock the slide to the rear, visually inspect, seat lock, tug, cycle, those Serrations really help me if I want to do a press check. Little tap, tap, that slide went into battery and I'll holster up. So we got a piece of printer paper at 10 yards. I'm just gonna draw and fire a couple rounds. I'm gonna come out of the holster, acquire the sights, and take a couple shots and just see how it feels. Make sure the thing works, because we put it together in the shop and... Should be good. All right, here we go. Eyes and ears, everybody? Eyes and ears. Felt good. Do that again. All right. Do a few more. I'll fire a few shots now. I got so high on that, I held the slide lock lever down. It's been a while since I've shot plastic guns. I've been shooting the uh, Berettas for a while. Feels good. I threw one there. I got a Charlie, which I'm not super happy with. Drew, I'm blaming that on you. I dig that. Guns topped off. I say we uh, paste up that target and shoot a group and see what kind of accuracy we can get out of it now that I've shot it a little quick. Down range. range. Alright, so we've got a Good old fashioned post-it note. Easy target you can pick up. You guys see us use these often. Seven yards with our freshly crafted with pride polymer 80. What's the color of this again? Cobalt. 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 And, and cobalt's the slide and this is? Frame is cobalt. The slide is a PVD gray coating. PVD gray. All right. Just checking pure accuracy of the gun now. You want to take a few shots? Sure. Nice. Right in the center with the first one. Here you go. I always love the lighting in here. You can watch the bullet. Awesome. Printer paper, seven yards. We're just gonna run this thing as fast as I can put the sights back onto the target. I'm just feeling how that slides track in, feeling how that trigger feels when I get to the end of the magazine. I'll dump and reload from the Neo Mag and follow up with a couple of shots. Here we go. You guys got eyes and ears? Eyes and ears. All right.
Get in there! Ha <laughs> ha I had a bad grab on that, which is why we want to index our mags into the gun. Had like a... Fought through it. Did it look as bad as it felt? Yeah. Guys sometimes talk about as they're shooting quickly. Did you see the sights? Did you not see the sights? I have no trouble with these uh, night vision sights that were supplied to us for this build. Watching it track. I've also, if you've got a good grip, really your consciousness should go from, I see the sight, coming in and on and off the target, up and, up and off the target. If you've got a good grip, it shouldn't be this. It should really be more just like, a slight rocking as that sight comes back towards your face. I'll show you. Watch the sight. I'm kind of was, was stopping the gun at the apex of the recoil. I'll do it again. Watch the sight. Watch the front of the slide. About the highest from me aiming at seven yards that that gun's going is two or three inches of rise when I'm looking at the target. I'm going to fire twice and I'm going to press the sh shot at the height of the recoil. I'm gonna freeze there because the slide's still gotta come back and we'll see if the bullet leaves the paper. And it did. My point in this is this gun's doing a good job with the way the, the texturing is done. It's allowing me to hold on to it. The slide's cycling flat. If the gun looks like it's shooting flat, it's because it is. And it, the gun will do it if, if you do you, your part. Didn't have another mag. One thing I really enjoy doing in my training is point shooting or hip shooting, depending on what you want to describe it as. So we're still at seven yards. We've still got a piece of printer paper out there. I'm just going to draw not with any great amount of speed. I like that. So we got a good hit at about seven, eight yards on a piece of printer paper. Good hit. Try that again. Headshot. I wish I was aiming for the head. I shot a little higher than I planned. That reload was weak sauce. Reload was weak sauce. Loser buys lunch. Fair enough. All right, so because you don't have a holster and I do, let's start from a low ready. Ready, set, crazy monkey! So we threw a Surefire X300 Ultra on there. And this is basically a 19 size gun. So we've got the dueling tree down there at 10 yards. This is an illuminated range. We need it to film, but you'll see this super bright spot. I just want to see how the gun runs with the light on there. Let's check it out. Would you give me a mag? Woo! Couple parting thoughts here. Just to reiterate what we talked about in the gun room, 
you're building a gun here. You're basically building the gun. Yeah, you're getting the components, but you have to make sure that you're assembling it right. There may need to be some doctoring. Think about like working on a car. You may have to do some adjustments. We ran a couple hundred rounds through it. You guys just saw it. Those were the, the inaugural rounds. Gun shoots accurately, cycles properly, mags drop free, uh, all good stuff. But you may have to, to get it to that point, break it in. About the only thing I do would be the slide stop lever. The one that it ships with, perfectly fine. Just the way I hold a gun, I would put uh, an oversized uh, slide stop lever in there, which I'll swap it out. I've got some at home. How do people get a hold of you guys? Polymerady.com. Polymerady.com. Super easy. You can order up parts. If you got a local gun store that you want to inventory these things, talk to them. Say, hey man, why don't you have these on the shelves? A lot of cool new stuff coming from these guys. They've come a long way. I enjoy the gun. I think it's cool, man. I like this one is special because we did it together. We did it together. If you guys have not subscribed to the channel here, please do. It helps get guys like this in front of you. It helps us bring you cool products like this. It also makes me feel better. When I lay in bed at night and there's not as many subscribers as I think I'm supposed to have because of what I feel I should have, you can change that. You can change how I feel when I'm laying in bed at night. Be safe. Be well. Don't be a dickhead. Gang, we've got another cool episode of the Carry Trainer channel here that sounded super <laughs> We're going to do it again. <laughs> no, it will not. Ready? <laughs> <laughs> Polymer 80 Inc. 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 Correct. Cool, man. I appreciate you coming all the way up here. We'll see you in like five weeks at S12. S12, looking forward to it. I'm going to dig it. We're going to have fun. We'll have this.